this wonderful mission, which is to raise the kids in the best Islamic way. Now let's say the man goes out to work, the husband, the wife goes out to work. Who's going to look after the children? We send them to nurseries. Do you think a nursery will be able to make up for the child the compassion, the love, the care, the education of his or her mother? Impossible. Impossible. Allah has endowed women with an ability to understand their children, to understand a sigh, understand a cry, understand a smile, what it means. And I feel that personally. Honestly, when I deal with my daughter, for example, when she cries sometimes, or she objects to certain things, or she expresses her anger or her, uh, or her, you know, her feeling of desperation sometimes, I don't realize what she means, but I feel surprised when I find out that my wife understands that straight away without any effort. It is something that Allah has endowed mothers with. When they hear a cry of a child, they know why the child is crying, they realize that. But men don't have that. So Allah has endowed the women with this wonderful gift in order to help them fulfill the duty which is one of the best duties and the most honorable duties a human being could ever do which is to bring up the Muslim, the future Muslim generation who can do that better than the mother and when the Muslim woman was at home looking after her children bringing up her children in the best of ways we had wonderful generations of Muslims. We had heroes, heroes like Abu Hanifa. We had heroes like a Shafi. A Shafi was brought up by his mother, by the way, because his, his father died when he was a little child. His mother was the one who brought him up, the one who you know, gave him all that energy and all that resolution to study and to become one of the best scholars in the history of Islam. It was his mother, Imam al-Bukhari. One of the great scholars of Islam, and we know his Sahih Bukhari is the most authentic book after the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who brought him up? His mother. She was the one who traveled to Mecca and took her son with her when he was very young in order for him to learn from the scholars in Mecca. He became one of the most outstanding scholars in the history of Islam. We had uh, Al Imam Malik, we had a Shafi'i, we had Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal because they had great mothers who brought them up in the best ways. Don't belittle your duty when you remain at home and you look after your children. We say this is the principle, this is the main principle. Now there are exceptions obviously. Now the objections that came or some of the inquiries that came via the email, actually we're talking about exceptions. Yes, we need women or uh, you know female doctors so that our women, our sisters, our wives our mothers can go to a Muslim doctor, female doctor. That's very important. But we can't say to all the women, be doctors. Yes, we need some women in education, obviously, to be teachers. But we are, when we talk about the general principle, we talk about the, you know, when we talk about the general principle, we, talk, we are general. There are always exceptions. We are not talking about the exceptions. These exceptions, and no one, you know, disagrees with that. We know it. And the, such, you know, exceptions were present during the life of Muhammad sallallahu But when we talk about the guidelines, the general guidelines in Islam, we can see from the evidence, from the biography of the Prophet sallallahu and the way of life his companions were upon, that it is meant, it's within the maqasid of Sharia al Islam, yes, within the objectives, the general guidelines of Islam, that women, you know, remain at home. Why? Because they can then protect themselves, they can build themselves, and then they can build their children. And you know, the women that stay at home and they know how to utilize their time, they will tell you wonders of, what, of the things that happen to them. So we need Muslim doctors, women, female doctors. We need you know, fem female teachers, obviously we need that. We need some women in the field of da'wah, as, as, as long as they abide by the rulings of Islam, the rulings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But unfortunately, that we see with most of the women today, most of the women that are known in the field of da'wah, most of the women that you know, practice you know, certain jobs and certain duties that are, that are very necessary, like being a doctor, being a teacher, unfortunately, most of them you know, transgress the boundaries of Islam in the name of helping Islam. 
Now this is contradiction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is obviously not pleased with. So please, uh, you know, don't get me wrong when I talk about the general guidelines of Islam. It is meant for the woman to build herself in her, ha in her home and to build her home, to build her children and to support her husband so that we become, uh, or we complement each other. This is how things go. But the issue or the disease that has come to us through the enemies of Islam, and they have managed to put that in the curriculums in schools, that, oh woman, if you are not in the front line, you're not doing anything. They say, you're staying at home doing nothing. That's not true. Some people are meant to be in the front line. Some people are meant to be in the second line. Some people are meant to be in the back lines. And everyone is important and everyone is doing a wonderful job. But the question here, who do you want to get reward from? Do you want to get recognition from the people around you? If this is your uh, goal and this is the most important thing in your life, then you are not doing that, you're not doing that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for the true believers, they are waiting for reward from Allah. Even if their names are not mentioned, even if they are working behind the scenes, they are important and they are significant to the growth and to the welfare of Islam and the Muslims. So only look forward for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't you know, expect recognition and gratefulness on the part of the people. This is how we become successful. But if everyone wants to be in the front line, who's going to work behind the scenes? And sometimes the work behind the scenes is more important than the front line. So this is a culture that has infiltrated our people, especially the younger generation. And everyone wants to be in the front line. And if some, some of the good sisters who have very good intention, you know, they don't consider themselves to be in the field of da'wah, if they are not on TV screens, if they are not traveling by themselves without a mahram, if they are not, for example, known all around the world, and if their uh, videos and their lectures are not on the web, if this is not the case, they don't, think, they, they don't consider themselves to be in the field of da'wah. And I assure you that all the reward that Allah has prepared for people like a Shafi'i, like a Bukhari, obviously the reward will go to their mothers because they are the ones who make them that way. So if you are sincere for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we understand the, this guideline, this, this, these main guidelines in Islam that a woman is meant to preserve herself and her chastity and her, the purity of her soul at home. And the exceptions are dealt according to the necessity. We don't deny that. And even the Prophet ﷺ told us that at, at the time of you know, common fitna and extreme fitna around, even men should do their best and try their best to stay at home. And the Prophet ﷺ said that at the time of the fitna, he said, Kunu ahlasa buyutikum. Be like you know, the mats that you put on the doorstep inside your house. Don't go out. So it's better for the Muslim at times of hardship to spend most of their time at home where they can preserve themselves, preserve their families and build their children. And then when they go out, their impact is strong. They're always positive. They're always making a change instead of mixing with the people and getting influenced negatively and affected negatively so they lose some of their iman and some of their righteousness. So I hope this point has become clear. Inshallah we will take a short break then we will talk and we will proceed with some of the great events that happened to the Prophet ﷺ so stay with us. Uh -huh.